I'm Deucey too much, man. Shout out Catch Your Body Gang. How did Deucey too much come about? Like, where did that name come from? Uh, <clears throat> that name came from, shit, everybody used to always tell me, like, I was a little funny-ass nigga when I was younger, so all the girls used to tell me, like, when I used to be in their ear, they used to, like, oh, you was too much, you was too much. Then, like, a group of my homies, and they was like, hey, we need too much in life, like, so we just kept putting too much behind our name. It's a lot of us with too much behind the name. Um, what's it like being from Toledo? <clears throat> Being from Toledo, uh, it's crazy, man. Like, that shit normal to us, but, like, motherfuckers in Toledo really be, like, dying. Like, motherfuckers really with all that shit. Like, motherfuckers die every day, females, males. Like, a lot of motherfuckers in the city fucked up behind death, so it's just like a war zone. Everybody for themselves. So how has that, like, influenced the way that you move, like? How you hang with people? Uh, due to like certain people getting shot and stuff, it, it kind of do affect them. Cause like, like I said in a couple of my songs, like no, one of my songs I said, all my niggas still alive, ain't none of them died. I ain't never like had no homies that died, but I don't watch homies get shot and get paralyzed. And I see them, I can't even look at them straight. So I gotta duck my head when I see him, when he talks too much to be used to no more. I done seen people get shot and survive through it multiple times. I done seen people get shot and can't even think straight, can't talk no more, can't walk, none of that. Like, so, it, it definitely affects. <clears throat> Who inspired you to write this song? Like, what was it like when you first started rapping and find yourself? Uh, who influenced me to start rapping? I kind of want to say, it was a lot of people, really, it was P.A.D. My nigga, uh, so my nigga P.A.D., one day we in the studio, like, and I'm just, I'm just in there chilling. I always used to go to the studio, but I never write shit. I'm just, <clears throat> I'm just there for fun, gambling, shoot dice or something. So he's like, man, I just did a feature with this nigga from out of town, and my part sweet. I like that shit, but I don't want to drop it because this shit ass. I'm just like, so what you going to do, steal the nigga beat? He's like, hell yeah, you get on that shit. Like, hell no, I ain't no rapper. He like, fuck, get on it. So I get on it. We get the, I rap it. We end up shooting a video to it, 50 shots. A lot of people was rocking with it. They like, a lot of big homies that rap and stuff from the South and everywhere. They all was seeing me. They like, oh, little bro, I see you, your, your video, you got it. Like, people who really be rapping be trying to get their attention and they don't really pay them more attention. But I wouldn't even look. I was just having fun. And I seen everybody like, oh, you feel me? So I'm like. Fuck it, I made another song, and after that, I just started making songs because more people started liking them, and some people didn't like them, but I was just doing it for fun. I ain't never gave a fuck about no rapping. So, <clears throat> it's interesting that you say that. So, you never really had dreams of rapping. Like, that's no, not one of the no. things you... Actually, at a point in time, I didn't know what the, what I wanted to do. Still like way like you feel me, I'm undecided what I wanna do. When I was a youngin, I used to box a lot. I was good at that, everybody wanted me to be a champ, but I, I quit it. Most of the sports I started quitting slowly. Everybody like, Oh, you just quit everything, what you wanna do? Cause then I played football, I was terrible at football. So I played I did uh basketball, I hooped. I was I was kinda sweet at it, but then I quit. Everybody like, Damn, you quit basketball, what you doing now? I'm like, Man, I'm just chilling, I'm just me. I'm in the hood shooting dice somewhere or something. As long as I go to school, you feel me? Get my grades. I was chilling. Then one day I just said, I'm going to try rapping. I did find out sports one for me, but everybody else ain't realized that yet. So, out of all your friends, who do you consider, consider like your right hand man? The person that you might be seeing with all the time? My right hand man, it's a lot. And I say that because, like, all my friends, we all like brothers. Like, we all hang around each other. Like, it ain't, like, maybe I might be with with Josh and, or, or Jamie might be kicking it with Josh and I might be with anybody, D or Young O. So, everybody be around each other at different times. So, we all together, but my right-hand man is, is I got to say, Josh Bands, man. That's, that's my dog.
Um, outside of your friend group, who is the most influential person in your life right now? Like who either keeps you going or inspires you, inspires you to keep going? A lot of people inspire me. Like, like Flex, that's big bro. He, he keep me going. Uh, I got my uncles and, and everybody. They like, oh, you feel me? They all salute me and tell me keep going. Uh, a lot of Bunny, E Bunny, he he influenced you. But the biggest person I probably say had the biggest impact on my life, like influencing me to do something right now, would probably be Tyler Tyler McCurry because he always told me like, little bro, like you gotta find your lane, you gotta find your passion, like and everything I ever did. He'd support me, but he'd keep me real with me. Like he like told me like, oh this sweet, this trash, don't even do this, try a different thing, or or keep working at this, keep working, keep working. And when when music came along, he like, Lil bro, I feel like this you, you just gotta find yourself, that's it. It's gonna take a little time to find yourself with this you. So he always tell me like, keep working, keep working. This song might be trash, but like, just switch it up like this. Like he always positive, so shout out to me, bro. Um, and I know you listen to some of your friends are also rappers. <clears throat> What's it like being from a a city that's full of rappers like is it competition does that get in the way of friendships or is it more kind of show love like uh, how some other cities are to general? what i would say with with our city we're having a lot of rappers the city will make it a competition but the rappers they don't be no competition they show love to each other like everybody don't even know like like pad and young o and Ky and Kyrie's little lucky. They don't even know we all cool like that. They try to make it like, oh, his song better than this song, or he did this better than him this song, or they getting this performance, but he doing this on iTunes. Like, they don't even know we all around each other every day, like hang with them like some real. We don't care about what they saying or who doing better. We all trying to get each other better. We call each other every day, like, oh, I seen that video you dropped. Like, I might come with some hard shit. We all support each other. But the city, like, on Facebook, they like on a lot of internet and social networks, they try to make stuff a competition and little people trying to be funny or little stuff like that. But so has that ever like? I know you said that th that y'all support each other, but seeing that all the time, like, do that ever get in your head? And maybe sometimes y'all do beef or like do you know not talk to each other for a couple days? Like how? <clears throat> How do you tune out social media, or how do y'all solve problems when social media get to y'all heads? Actually, one time, a, a couple of our uh, people in the group was like beefing over some social media stuff, but it wasn't even never no hard beef. Like we'd be still be around each other, we'd just be acting funny, and then they'd laugh it off or something, whatever. With me, I ain't never like you feel me because I ain't give a fuck what social media care about because I ain't care about rapping that much. So I'm like. I'm rapping for the joke of it. Y'all think it's ass, y'all think it's ass. Y'all think it's hot, y'all think it's hot. Like, I was just rapping just to, you feel me? But them who were actually been taking it serious, like Kyrie and stuff, like, they didn't do nothing to make each other, but like social media be like, this song ass compared to this song, but this song get hit. And now niggas feel some type of weight because they like, damn, they talking about your, your song better than mine, so now I'm trying to go to the studio. We all share one studio, so he like, I'm trying to get in the studio and record some of my shit. Like, why you, you feel me? But the other people like, no, your last song was ass. Like, I feel like the head getting mixed up with some media, but they ain't never been like, when we got into it, we stopped talking two, three hours, then we back like, Nigga, you a hope for that, but what up? Like, mm -hmm. you straight. Um, okay, so back to kind of like how you grew up Toledo scene. Have you been, have you ever like been in the streets or is it more like you just seen some stuff so it's kind of like you take note of it or have you actually been like in those situations? Uh, I would never just... Or just like, involved in violence period, I'm sorry. No, nah, I would never just like no violent person. Like I ain't never just like I'm coming out here and I'm about to kill somebody today. Like this is my life. Like I always been like the cool person but I still don't trust you because... As a youngin, my family already installed that in my head. I done seen him people cut off their best friend because they did wrong, wrong move or something. And then I done seen people get shot when I was younger. I was eight years old, seeing people get shot and seeing people shoot at people. So 
it's like I see it and I know exactly what I got to do off of me, the strength of me learning. And everybody know me in the neighborhood. I want no hood nigga just banging everywhere on the corner every day. But everybody knew me and knew where I was from. I was from this part. And they know, like, I do what I got to do if I got to because they know I know how to do it. But I ain't just going out seeking no violence, no. So... Um, how is it how is it being so young but having so many older influences like I know you said like your uncles and just our people you hang around or look up to are older yes. so do you think that you kind of grew up too fast or just started doing stuff that maybe it wasn't time for or like how did that go yeah, I most definitely feel like I, I, I'm older than what I'm supposed to be. Like, a lot of people still think I'm older just over the way I act. Like, I was advanced. Like, I've been, like, literally doing all this stuff, like, since I was a little boy. So, uh, me hanging out with all the older people, that became natural. And, like, people like E-Bunny and Tyler and Bankroll, like, to people who my age, they big people. But to me, they normal people because I'm around them on a daily. I'm 15 years old in a club. People are going to 7-Eleven parties. I'm in a club with grown women and on top of the bar and on top of the pool table. Like, I was doing that as a 15-year-old. So, what they get excited over as kids, I'm like, man, I'm doing eh, They don't excite me. So, did you ever find yourself getting into, like, I know you said, like, as rappers, y'all kind of support each other, but what about just outside of rapping, like, just being doocy? Have you ever gotten into, like, some beef that you wasn't supposed to be in, or, like, like, how'd that go? Man, I done got into a lot of beefs about a lot of stuff. Like, I didn't beef, but, like, I don't know. Like, my, I done got into beef that ain't had nothing to do with rapping. Like, before, like, I just started rapping, like, so I really don't get into beef with rappers. Like if rappers hate on me, they hate on me. We just don't fuck them. But and like I didn't got into be over dice games. I didn't got into be over what you did to my girl, what you did to my family. I didn't got into be so if I just heard you sneak this in there talking and or you talking on the internet. I ain't got into a beast where we, you just, we fight it out when we see each other or he might try to call somebody and be like, oh, we about to shoot this nigga if they see me and then I might call people and we, I've been to a lot of different beasts or a lot of stuff. Is there, what's one specific thing that you just want to clear up? Like people just keep talking about it and the story's not right or do you even have like an experience like that? Like you want everyone to know your side of the story because you haven't been able to do it. Yes. What I want everybody to know is, like, they take stuff too serious into a competition. Like, just because I rap, don't be like, oh, it's too many rappers. He ain't better than Diddy, so he should quit. Or he ain't better than Young O, or he should quit. Or somebody, he ain't better than such and such. Dante, he should quit. Lil DM3. Like, now y'all making us feel like, damn, y'all saying this nigga better than me. I feel like, fuck this nigga. When really, me and him been cool, and we ain't supposed to be like that. Like, so quit making it into, like, I'm trying to come in and just be this motherfucker and trying to take niggas spots and shit when I'm rapping because I'm not. I'm just, you feel me, doing what I know I can do. And other stuff, like, if a nigga speak how he feeling, y'all say, oh, he trying to be like this certain rapper. He trying to be like this famous person. Famous people ain't the only person that go through them, them problems. They ain't the only ones that be going through shit like that and feel like that. So y'all can't say that because who's to say he's the only nigga in the world that can feel this certain way and say this type of stuff? Y'all don't know how niggas really be feeling. They don't know the background, so I don't like that. So kind of venturing outside of that, how is rapping or just living your everyday life now that you have been diagnosed with diabetes? How do you treat that? Uh, or cope with that? I just got diabetes like a year or two ago. When, when when I first got it, I was in the hospital. I didn't know what it was. I thought only fat people get diabetes. So I'm in a room. I wake up in the hospital room. I passed out. No cap. I swear I was in eighth grade. It was like my last day of school or like two days before my last day of school. And I'm sitting there and I'm just drinking. I'm just drinking orange juice. I don't know why I'm dehydrated. I'm just drinking. I drunk like... 40 of them and people just staring at me like what the fuck i'm just drinking 40 orange juices going to 50 so i don't remember shit else from that 
and I wake up, I'm in the hospital room, and my phone going crazy. Family, it, my whole family packed out. Mom's side and dad's side. I don't even talk to my mom's side of the family like that because of issues that happen, but I still love everybody. But they all still out there for me, propping up people I ain't seen in years, full. And everybody coming in, they only letting people in like two or three at a time. And everybody coming back and they hugging me and they crying. I'm thinking I'm about to die. I'm like, what the hell? What just happened to me? And then a doctor come in the room like, you got diagnosed with diabetes. Like, the hell is that? I ain't know what it was. I'm like, only fat people get that. You know, see everybody crying. I'm like, do that mean I'm about to die? They're like, no, nah. they said you almost was about to die, but we saved you and you just got to take care. And they taught me. But at the moment, I'm just letting, sitting in the hospital bed. I'm like, fuck life. Like, let me die. Like, I don't want to be stabbing myself. Once they explain me, I ain't trying to be stabbing myself every day. Let me die. That's what I told them. And then everybody like, no, no, quit that. And then I told them, I'm like, I don't want my mom, I don't want my granny, I don't want nobody in the room. Send my uncles back here and my boy cousins. Because at that point, girls don't realize what you're going through. Like, they realize, but they don't really know. You got to talk to somebody who really can relate to you. So I talked to real uncles and cousins that was from the streets, and they told me straight up, like, man, you got to quit being a bitch about it. You got to get over this. You got to do what you got to do. Girls was going to sugarcoat it, and I probably would have never got through that if they wouldn't have told me that. So do you think um, seeing rappers like Boosie, like do you think that helped you a little bit? Oh, like or you, it was just, eh. <laughs> nah, that shit ain't helped me. I ain't, like the first, first eight, nine months I was out the hospital, I ain't even take no medicine. I don't even know what I was on. I was tripping. It's like I wanted to die or something. I wasn't taking no medicine. I ain't even know Boosie had diabetes. I was like, I ain't give a fuck about that medicine shit. I'm like, fuck it. Fuck that shit. I'm just, I'm just trapping out until I die. That's how I was thinking. Right. I'm lying to my granny and I'm, did you take my your medicine? Yeah. So until one day I got fucked up off that shit. I was in the hospital. My my leg was fucking up. They told me they might have to cut it off and shit. So I see my granny and cry again. I'm like, damn, I ain't about to keep having my people's cry over this shit. So I just start saying, fuck it. I gotta grow up. Do what I gotta do to live. Fuck it. face reality. Okay, so, you know, cheer up a little bit. <laughs> um, so back to kind of like, yo, I guess at this point we could kind of say rap career. Mm -hmm. Back to rapping. What local rapper do you want to work with in the future? Maybe somebody that you worked with before, but y'all ain't really get to, you know, spend time together in the studio or just somebody who you haven't worked with before. And this could be... Yeah, love <laughs> Uh, I ain't gonna lie. I got a lot of people hitting me up that want to do features with me now. I'm not saying they on some fan shit because I fuck with everybody. You ain't gonna see me do no feature with nobody that I don't really mess with in real life. If I feel like you a whole ass nigga in real life, I'm not doing no song with you. Period. Like that. So, it's a lot of people that I'm, I'm supposed to be working with when I get back to the city. Casey Coleon, uh, me and Lucky, we supposed to be working on something. Uh, me and Dee Dee talked about making a song together before people don't even know that. Like, he, had, we, we was ex uh, we exchanged numbers and we was texting about some stuff, but we never did it. Me and Hefe was talking about some stuff, and we never did it. So it's a couple Boomer. I want to work with him. I want to rap with him. So it's a couple people I want to uh, work with. Me and Bankroll, we got some songs together. So not not really like that. Me and B three, Lil DM three. I want to work with him too. But, yeah. That's basically all. That's a lot. You got a lot coming. Yeah, because it's like they all messed with me before I was even a rapper. Like, right. I'm over there gambling with them, or I used to hoop with them, or did anything with them. So, it's like, I don't got to do a feature with my niggas, because it ain't like I'm on some rap industry shit, because I don't give a fuck about that. I'm just having fun with the people I've been having fun with. I'm glad you said having fun because that's how I feel up about rapping. Like it's an art. Like you should have fun yeah. with it. Um, how would you describe your rapping technique? Like, are you a person that gotta write stuff down? Are you like a freestyler, or is it both? Like, you write something down, do you get in the studio and it be something totally different? But you be like, oh, I like, I like that. Actually, uh, I feel like writing down is horrible for me because. 
one song I took my time with, I'm writing, I'm writing, and I'm, and I'm practicing, I'm trying to sing. I even redid the song over a couple times. Keep doing it over because I want the sound right. So we put it out, and everybody like, that's trash. Like, that shit suck. So I'm laughing at it like, shit, I tried, fuck it. I ain't taking it serious. Like, damn, they booing me. I'm like, shit, that shit was trash. Now I got to just try some shit. And I found out I was overdoing it. Writing ain't for me. So the next, like, couple days, I go in the studio. I go right to it. So I go in there, I play a beat, and I'm just like saying shit, and as I'm saying it, I'm, I'm memorizing it, and then, I'm, you feel me, and then when I knock it out real quick and don't even put that much effort into it, that's what I did with my freestyle, I, I let that out and everybody liked that, they're like, damn, it's a hit, he got it, da da da. So then I, I did the same thing with Dollar Signs, and I, and I posted a preview of it, and everybody like, that's fire. It, motherfuckers start DMing me, damn, let's do a feature, da da da, sending me beats. So then I just let out another preview to, um, I forget the name of the song. I just let out another preview, though. Oh, 90 Seconds. I just let out that preview, and everybody like, that shit fire. That's a hit, bro. They keep working. Everybody, motherfuckers texting me that I ain't talked to in years, or, or, or females that be like, I don't fuck with you in real life, and they ain't been fucking with me for months over some shit I did. Now they texting me, what's up, what you doing, what's up with you, I see this. So it's like. I'm overdoing it. I can't overdo it. I just got to let out the shit that's just, that's easy for me to knock out because that's what they like it. They like them songs when it's quick, easy, and I just was in there flowing with it. When you go to the studio, um, what do you need there? Like, what is a for sure thing to get you in that zone? Uh, To get me... It's, it's crazy because a lot of people like it quiet when they record. To get me in my zone, like, I need my niggas in the back of me. Like, I need them in the background shooting dice or playing or arguing. Or I need probably a couple girls there because it be girls there when we record sometimes. So, you feel me, a couple ladies around get that, like, vibe. Like, I need stuff like that. Like, I need some type of... uh candy or something to keep me going that's stuff that i need like if it's quiet i'm gonna feel weird like what am i doing here like it's so you feel me i need all that um okay so kind of trailing off and kind of finishing up touching on the lady scene like has this lifestyle kind of gave you more clout or how's that going with the ladies uh i've been always good with ladies like i've always <laughs> had ladies like I don't even know, like, I ain't never even been the best looking nigga. It's like, girls just always fuck with me off the strength. They knew I was funny. That's that little nigga. I always was dressed. I always had every pair of J's. My family always kept me fresh. So, it like, I wasn't out here just doing uh, shit because I need to scramble up money. I was doing extra for me, but my family always kept me fresh. So, I always fuck with me, and they always, then I always hung around the older niggas, so they wanted me. I only got turned down a couple times by some girls, but nine times out of ten, they was fucking with me. So this ain't really bringing me no extra. It's just certain. I was moving so fast, and I'm acting like a like a grown up because I'm watching certain older people do certain things. So I'm doing it with the youngest, but they not used to that. So girls like he fucked up, and but now they starting to like I see you and all that. So I don't know. That shit crazy. So you doing all this talk about being a ladies man? Do you have a girlfriend? Uh, no, I do not have a girlfriend right now. I just, I just got a relationship not that long ago, but I ain't, I'm chilling, man. I'm focused on me. Okay, and then last question. Where do you see yourself five years from now? How do you see things going for you? Man, in five years from now, I'm trying to, uh, I don't see myself in Toledo for sure. I'm trying to get the hell out of there. I'm trying to be at the top, kicking it with millionaires. You feel me? Like, family, whole family doing good. I'm bringing my family with me, my niggas with me.